Corey Colbert converts again. Outside to Corbell. Oh, on the 20 footer. Good! Bounce pass to Duffy's left hand. Hello, and thanks for tuning into this week's CTV Sports episode. I'm Carly Schwartzkopf. And I'm Olivia Landis, here to bring you some CSU sports updates. The Colorado State men's basketball team sealed a huge in-state win last Tuesday in Laramie, Wyoming, with a final score of 78-73. The win over the Cowboys marks the Rams' seventh win out of the last eight. The Rams came out hot, scoring the first five points of the game, where Gian Clavel, who's finished the game with 20 points and five rebounds, helped take the lead for most of the first half. The Cowboys went on to take the lead 28 to 27 with five minutes remaining, where CSU then reclaimed the lead on the next possession by a jumper by redshirt sophomore J.D. Page, and eventually built an eight-point lead into halftime, 41 to 33. The second half was a battle all the way up to the final minute, with the Cowboys starting fire at the second half, taking the Rams' lead down to two. Free throws became the game changer towards the end where CSU took a 10-point lead with 12 minutes to go. After single free throws by each team made it 70-69. to Clavel drove to the lane with 40 seconds to go and dished it to Nixon in the corner who hit the three making a four-point play. Wyoming continued to make buckets late but Nixon was key sealing all four attempts to the line. Colorado State walked away with the win 78-73. The Rams now improved to 18-9 on the season and moved into the top spot of the Mountain West with in-conference 10-4 record. The 10-4 start also is the best 14-game record ever in Mountain West play for the Rams and ties the school best through 14 conference games set back in 1988. The Colorado State team plays the University of New Mexico tomorrow, February 21st. Tip-off is set for 8 p.m. Olivia, this was another super close game for the Rams. Yeah. The intensity was crazy. This was a huge, huge game for Colorado State. They needed to win this game to now be tied for first place in the Mountain West with Boise State. Yeah, this was extremely important. We talked about how their remaining games, they have to win out if they want to keep that first place in conference play. But, you know, the men's side is extremely competitive. You know, we take a look at the women's where, you know, they've been kind of dominating. And the men's side for Mountain West is a little bit different. The Rams have seemed to have struggled in that first half constantly and then always seem to pick it up. And they, it comes back to those key players, you know, with consistency. We see Prentice Nixon, Gian Clavel, Emmanuel Magbo, who again sealed another double-double. Double, double. Yeah, and that consistency has to be there every single game. They only have still that magnificent seven, which... This is unreal that they are tied for first place in the Mountain West with seven players. This Colorado State team is talented. And from what we've seen, we talked to Emmanuel Magbo, and he really wants you know to give the ball to Nico Carvacho more down low. Mm -hmm. These players know each other in and out. So it's really helpful that they can help each other out. And since they only have seven players, the team play is kind of what makes them unstoppable. I definitely agree with you on that one. The fact that there has only been seven players playing in this game, they've been able to know each other better and really be able to play a better game. Like you said, Emmanuel Magbo talked to us after the game against Wyoming and he said, I need to, you know, take players like Nico Caravaccio under my wing and show them how to be a good post player. So the fact that they're able to come together and really work well, I think it's important. And they have another big game coming up against New Mexico. We have to talk about that. The last game, there was a lot of drama surrounding it with, you know, the coach getting in a fight with the player. And, you know, a lot of people have said that this is going to be probably the biggest game for New Mexico because Colorado State did say we're going to come back in New Mexico and beat them. Yeah, this is a huge game for both teams, and Colorado State has dealt with so much adversity this season. This team has, it feels like every other week something just comes up, and it's really had focus on them, I mean, hit them emotionally. So this yeah. team has really struggled, and for them to already be talked about possibly getting into the NCAA mm -hmm. tournament, this team is talented, and it looks like they can handle anything that gets thrown their way. Yeah, excited to see how the rest of the season turns out for the men's. But speaking of the women's, last Wednesday, the Colorado State women's team clinched a 61-54 to border war victory over the Wyoming Cowgirls at Moby Arena. Seniors Elin Gustafson and Ellen Nystrom combined for 44 points to help lead the Rams to their seventh straight win in, rivalry in the rivalry series. Gustafson dominated for the Rams offensively with 26 points on 13 of 19 shooting while tacking on eight rebounds. Nystrom wasn't silent though as she put up 18 points of her own with nine rebounds and six assists, just short of a double-double. 
The Rams stepped into the fourth quarter trailing by two, but the lead didn't last long as CC got hot down the stretch to build a six-point lead. The Rams held over 58% shooting from the field in the fourth quarter alone. Hannah Taverdi added to the intensity shooting three for four in the fourth quarter, with seven of her nine points coming in the final period. As a team, the Rams outshot the Cowgirls 50 to 44 percent on the game. With the win, CSU has officially won 11 of its past 12 Mountain West contests, with first place in conference play still secured. Up next, the Rams take on New Mexico for a pink out game in Moby Arena this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Carly, like we just talked about, the women's conference is a little less competitive for this CSU team than on the men's side. However, CSU did struggle this past game and, you know, coming off of a loss and one of their first losses in a long time in the Mountain West Conference, they struggled a little bit. Yeah, you know, they have won almost all their games this whole season, being ranked first in the Mountain West, but these games are super close. They're not blowouts, which you have to take into consideration, too. And this team also has two all-stars. Both of those seniors, Ellen Nystrom and Elin Gustafsson, are mm -hmm. crazy good. They racked up 28 combined rebounds, over mm -hmm. half of the points for the entire team. These two girls are unstoppable, but truly the rest of the team does need to step up, and that's yeah. why these games have been so close. You cannot rely on two players. Yeah, I agree, and CSU did see a loss of quite a few players on the women's side, so the fact that these two seniors are the stars of the show is not surprising. They've been, you know, talked about all four years that they've played, especially Nystrom, you know, she's been setting records. Just last week she's beat one of Becky Hammond's records, you know, so these players, the fact that they're able to carry this team is good but it kind of raises questions as to how they're going to compete next year when they do lose these two seniors. Yeah, and even though these games have been super close for them, this Colorado State women's basketball team is the best team, honestly, in the Mountain West that can handle adversity, too, in terms of the pressure of being ranked first and consistently being first. Yeah. They're close games, but they always get the win at the end. Definitely. Well, with all this basketball going on, we can't forget to talk about the 2017 All-Star Weekend that has officially passed us. Touching on some of the highlights, we'll start with the Taco Bell Skills Challenge, where a matchup between the big guys and the perimeter players seemed to be at stake for the second year in a row. New York Knicks' Kristaps Porzingis took home the trophy by taking down Utah's Gordon Hayward in the final round. Then we jump to the oh-so-popular three-point contest where, believe it or not, Clay Thompson did not take home the title. It took three full rounds for the Houston Rockets guard Eric Gordon to secure his first-place finish in the JBL three-point contest over Cleveland Cavaliers guard Kyrie Irving. Each scored 20 points in the championship round, forcing a bonus round, which was the first time since 2012 a shootout was required. Then we see a very upsetting Verizon slam dunk contest where Indiana Pacers rookie Glenn Robinson III took home the 94-87 win over Phoenix Suns' Derrick Jones Jr. Finally, we see a defenseless 66th NBA All-Star game finish with the West taking home the win 192-182. to 182. Although Anthony Davis might have been crowned king of the All-Stars game, your very own sportscasters Olivia and I are the All-Stars of court every Sunday at 1230. Here's a short clip of Olivia and I's intramural game this past Sunday. <laughs> Here's Olivia with the shot. Ooh. Oh, and it's money, man. Uh. I should have been in that three-point contest. <laughs> Still can't play believe Clay Thompson now. didn't win. Ooh. And there's another one. Oh, now it's Carly's time to shine. That defense. That defense, though. Oh, and, th and there's the feed, but, but where is it? Carly's <laughs> in the corner. Hit her. And and it's oh good. Finally, I oh, made one. Man. First one of <laughs> the whole all night. The warm up. <laughs> it's okay. Actually, it took me a lot longer to warm up than it took you. <laughs> uh, well, now it's time for a short break. But up next, we talk softball and tennis. Tune in to KCSU, your student-run radio station at Colorado State University. Live 24 hours a day, every day at 90.5 FM and KCSUFM.com. Live local new music now and news, talk, and sports. KCSU, the radio voice of Colorado State, on the air since 1964. You're watching CTV, produced by Colorado State University students, bringing you news, weather, sports, and entertainment from campus and beyond. CTV live Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. on campus and Fort Collins on Channel 11. Repeats at midnight, 8 a.m., noon, and 2 p.m. 
The Rocky Mountain Collegian is your student-run news and information platform. Pick up your paper on campus or around Fort Collins Monday through Thursday with special editions Fridays. And check out collegian.com anytime for all the latest updates. News, sports, entertainment, opinion, and more. The Rocky Mountain Collegian, serving Colorado State since 1891. College Avenue has been your student magazine for the last 10 years. College Avenue prints once a month covering topics that are relevant to the CSU and Fort Collins community. We also print special editions like the graduation guides at the end of each semester, the best of CSU each fall, and the orientation guide each summer. Look for us on racks around campus, off campus, or online at collegian.com under the College Avenue tab. With spring in session, the Colorado State tennis team has been quite the busy bee, constantly on the road to compete. I was able to sit down with coach Jared Camerata to discuss his thoughts on this past weekend's matches in Nebraska. Welcome to Ram Vision's weekly tennis update with head coach Jared Camerata. I'm Olivia Landis. Now coach, you guys are recently just coming off of another road win against Incarnate Word. You've currently won the past two out of your three matches, both coming away from home. What does this tell about your team's intensity and their ability to play away from home and away from their comfort zone? Um, yeah, it's a good thing. It's, it's always hard to get a road win, so we're pretty happy and you know, on this Friday, this past Friday, I don't know if we played our best match of the year, but we found a way to win, and um, that's a sign of good things as well. Mm -hmm. And you guys look forward to heading to Lincoln, Nebraska next, and you're taking on Drake and Nebraska. What are the challenges you're going to face traveling a little bit further than you've seen this past two weeks? So, you know, traveling always, um, you know, takes a little bit out of you, but um, we, we get in a day early and then we'll get a little practice in and then uh, also playing in Nebraska is, is at low altitude so um, it changes things up a little bit in terms of how the points go. The points are a lot longer than, than they are here at higher altitude. Previously before you went into your last match against Incarnate Word, you talked about how it's important to match your team's strengths with the opposing team's you know disadvantages maybe can you talk a little bit about that yeah um, yeah so we I think tennis and uh, simply put is you play your strengths to their weaknesses and um, and see what happens um, so so I think you know in the in the fall semester we really worked on getting things better and perhaps shoring up some of their weaknesses whereas now in the spring semester which is in season um, we really work a lot on here's your strengths how are we gonna get them better we work a little on getting their weaknesses better, but this semester we're, we're focused a lot more on here's your strengths, and um, and then once we get in the match, remind them of their strengths, and then let them know of their opponent's weaknesses, and say, hey, let's play your strengths, their weaknesses, and see how it shakes out. Thank you again to head coach Jared Camerata. That wraps up this week's Ram Vision Weekly Tennis Update. I'm Olivia Landis. Unfortunately, the Rams struggled against undefeated Nebraska, who claimed a 7-0 victory over CSU. With the loss, the Rams fell to 2-4 on the season. The Huskers jumped out to an early doubles win over CSU's number one duo, Emily Kolbau and Madison Porter, as well as a 5-4 win over CSU's number two duo. Colorado State now has a week off before action resumes with three matches in Las Vegas in March. You know, Carly... On the road, winning on the road as an athlete is always really tough, especially when you face a team like Nebraska that's been undefeated. Yeah, and this tennis team is pretty talented. You also have to consider, you know, tennis teams don't have a ton of players on them, so it really does come down to individual talent. Speaking of tennis talent, I am very good at Wii Tennis. Oh my God, I am really good at Wii Tennis. Yeah, if you push that A button, it goes really fast. We should probably challenge we each other to another. All time. right, <laughs> it's settled. <laughs> Well, a little rain didn't seem to bother the Colorado State women's softball team this past weekend at the Demarini Desert Classic as they walked away with a first day shutout against Northern Iowa. The split with Weber State and Texas State on Sunday, February 19th, the Colorado State Rams softball team jumped over .500 for the season where Lauren Buchanan and Hannah McCorkell were key players on the first day of the tournament. Recording consecutive singles to score, helping freshman Karina Gamboa pick up an RBI with a sacrifice fly to center field. The Rams defeated Iowa State 5-2 and then later that day defeated Northern Iowa 
After a rain cancellation on the second day, the Rams came out ready to play on Sunday where they opened up with a first day win over Weaver State 4-0. Senior Haley Hutton got the Rams on board with a two-run double in the second inning, helping seal a shutout against Weaver State. Later in the afternoon, however, CC was defeated by Texas State 3-0. Up next, the Rams will have a week off of competition before playing their first games at Ram Field. CC will host its home opener against Northern, Iowa, Northern Colorado on February 28th at 3 p.m. Well, it's time for one more break. But when we come back, we will have some special guests from the women's club lacrosse team. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. Welcome back from the break. We are now joined by CSU Women's Lacrosse Captains Jess and Stas. Thank you guys so much for joining us on the show. Thanks for having yeah, us. Thank you for having so let's talk a little bit about Colorado State Women's Lacrosse Club Team. Can you kind of dive into it and really tell us what you guys are all about? Yeah, so we are a student-run organization through the rec center. Um, we are a group of 27 girls and two coaches. We hire on our coaches. Um, we basically plan everything we travel across the nation we went just went to santa barbara this past weekend for a tournament we go to uh utah pittsburgh um mm -hmm. in the in march and then we also will have the um regional league championship here at csu in april mm -hmm. um, we fundraise for ourselves as well we do a lot of fundraising so we kind of work together on that because we do pay for everything ourselves um, but it's really fun and we get to travel and make relationships with each other and with other teams across the nation. Yeah, that's really cool. I've talked to quite a few other club teams here at Colorado State and you know they really pride themselves on the fact that they aren't just a club team, that they you know, are taken more serious in terms of being a true sports team with all this fundraising and all this traveling and stuff. You guys are the real deal and you're really good, so that's, that's really awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's nice that we're not the, or there's no D1 team. So that mm -hmm. means that we're the only lacrosse team on campus, which really helps. And it is a lot of work and effort, and so it's fun to put all that work towards something that we really are um, enthusiastic about. Right. Yeah. So you guys, as a team, almost every single year have made it into the nation's top ten for the WCLA. Mm -hmm. What has been the key to consistency for this? I think the number one thing is um, mental strength and uh, throughout the team. And then also we practice five days a week in the season mm -hmm. and then three days a week in the fall which is the off season. So it's just a, um, the whole team coming together mm -hmm. every day, putting work in, practicing how we're gonna play in the real game. Right, yeah, we work really hard at practice and then we also just really pride ourselves that we are, like, we are a club sport, but we really take it, we take it very seriously and ver are very competitive. Yeah, that's awesome. So you guys are the captains of the team. Is there anything in particular that you know you make the team do? Like we have to meet out for girls night and do all this stuff or and like do you really harp on the fact of what your ultimate goal is of the season yeah we definitely do and we we are a very close team I think we they're I mean they're my 27 best friends <laughs> um, I absolutely love this team with all my heart and we our ultimate goal is is nationals um, being the national champion again because we have in the past um, we also just have little goals throughout that, um, like we want to have a winning record this season. Uh, we just came home two and one from Santa Barbara, which is really exciting. And um, we just, I mean, we have these little goals throughout the season. And I think one of our goals this year is again to win that um, league championship because we do get the automatic qualifier for nationals if we do that. And last year we won it and beat out CU. That's awesome. So you guys obviously play a lot of really tough teams. Mm -hmm. Speaking of tough teams, you have BYU coming up here in March. That's a pretty big game for you guys. What's yes. going to be tough about that game? 
Um, it's been a while since we've seen them last. I think mm -hmm. it was the middle of the season last season when we saw them. So it'll be all new players, all new players for us and them. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just going to be a new game. Yeah, they're a very aggressive team and we always have to come out very aggressive and I think since uh, we've had the last four weeks where we could physically repair, it's time for us to mentally, mentally prepare for the rest of the season. Um, we are a very mental team and I think when, as we are going through practices, we really encourage positivity and having fun but also being really focused throughout each practice and throughout each game. So if any CSU student wanted to come support you guys, I know you guys travel a ton, but is there any way that you know CSU students can come and support you guys? Yeah, there, we actually have a Twitter page and an Instagram, uh, at CSU Women's Lacrosse. Um, that would be awesome. Okay. We put all of our games on there and just updates about how the season is going and what our team events are, mm -hmm. and that would be awesome. And then yeah. we'll also post about regionals, which we're hosting, like Sasa. So. Right, and we also okay. have a website that is to be updated very soon. Um, but yeah, we have our schedule on there now, mm -hmm. and that's also, there. it's like www.cscwomenslacrosse.com. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much to yeah, Jess and Stoss for coming us. on the show. We really appreciate it. Uh, that wraps up this week's CTV Sports. But be sure to check out our Twitter accounts and our YouTube page for more sports updates throughout the rest of the week.